you know, I've been playing a lot of Age of Empires as of late, and I thought, you know, why don't they kind of take it into the post-apocalyptic kind of future uh, in terms of building up a group of people and trying to survive, and instead of wild animals and stuff, you get mutants and that kind of crap. Um, uh, because I was thinking about, you know, you've got a lot of these post-apocalyptic games, but you're only, like, one person. Mm-hmm. And there was a cool zombie game that had come out on Armor Games. Now, since then, it's been become a free to play just whorehouse, so it's not really that much fun anymore. But whorehouse or whorehouse? Your scav- whorehouse, yeah. Po- no, poor? Whorehouse, okay. yeah, definitely. Yeah, rich house. Um, but uh, but but you know the, the whole idea of scavenging and, and and your resources not being gold and and that kind of stuff, but you know being. Uh, ammunition or people that you find out in, in the uh, the wilds of the apocalypse or whatnot. Um, I don't know. I, th- I think it'd be fun. It, it, I mean, you know, I really like the medieval times. Don't get me wrong, but I'm kind of tired of playing real time strategy games that are either strictly military mm, or historical. You know, the fantasy stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather have Sci-fi. something that's a little bit different and maybe not all, you know 100 about combat. You know, more about survival and going from there. So, and um, Ethan, I don't know. Would I always I, prefer a post apocalyptic setting. It just seems to be or you know what? You know, speaking of post-apocalyptic, here's here's a setting I, I would take even after uh, before that is so we always have the post-apocalypse, but we never we don't focus as much on the beginnings of that apocalypse. You know, so think Resident Evil and those kind of games. Like it's happening now. The pre-post. Uh, yeah, kind of <laughs> like like everything. Everything is developing. You know, there's stuff happening. People are getting sick or turning into stuff or uh, UFOs on its way, whatnot. But that that kind of time when you see everything develop, because we always see the, you know, the the after effects of it. I want to see maybe in there. So maybe not even post apocalyptic. Maybe you know the city's already built and, and shit's going down, and you're trying to. I mean, now it's not even Age of Empires, but fuck, I, I completely <laughs> changed my game. Um, but I want to see that man, like like Resident Evil. Did a really good job of that. I always loved how Resident Evil handled that. It, it the uh, second one, uh, actually probably more like the third one because the third one gave you more of a, a nemesis, gave you more of an idea of what was actually going on. But yeah, I like that. Like oh, you know, an hour ago everything was fine. There was like puppy dogs and stuff hanging out, and now those puppy dogs are all dead, and there's zombies and gargoyles. I don't and, like dead puppy dogs. Uh, I, I I don't either. But you know, I'm just <laughs> that's what happens though. You know, in these bad situations. So. Um, yeah, do something. Yeah, someone go do so that. Is there anything else to add besides just the kind of the the new skin to it? Um, what does the post apocalyptic setting do for strategy? Well, I think that I don't think you should just be humans or different you know races of humans. I think that maybe you should be able to be like a big Godzilla like monster, or you can be <laughs> the, like a blob or something like that. So you can be huge monsters that just you know rain. Uh, death upon everybody, or you could be like a zombie plague, or you could be werewolves. I don't know, something like that. You know, change it up so that every time you play, you have to have a completely different strategy. I mean, you're not going to deal with Godzilla with with a pocket knife. Well, I guess there's really no monster you deal with with a pocket knife. <laughs> so that's not, that, just don't go in any like monster in situations with a pocket knife. Yeah, well, even that is then, a shitty though, starting weapon. Know. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, oh fuck. Oh, hopefully we can attack my gremlins because we got like a ton so, of these pocket knives. We got a box full of pocket knives. Uh, my, Do you my, remember Giant's Kaboot? Is it, was uh-huh. it Giant's? Giant Citizen Kabuto? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of idea that, you know, there was these different races and they played so differently. Mm. Um, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I felt like... I don't uh, even know what this game I, is now. I felt like Warcraft was headed in that direction originally, but then they all, they boiled down there. You know, at, mm-hmm. one, at one point, Warcraft 3 was supposed to add demons, and then they figured out they're going to be way too powerful, so they have, everything mm-hmm. has to be balanced. But yeah, I would like to yeah. see that approach to add in different races. But my problem with post-apoc- po- post-apocalyptic settings is what's the... Uh, how do you win? Like, <laughs> like what would be the, <laughs> the end goal there? Um, so... Do you remember, uh, I, I, re- I did an interview with Sarah Northway a long time ago. Uh, she did a game called Rebuild, which was a zombie mm-hmm. game, uh, which was a great game, but the whole idea of rebuilding. So as opposed to like building things up from scratch, like, you know, secure. I, I like the idea of going into a, a ruined place and rebuilding everything, getting things set back up, and then slowly, you know, progressing towards, uh, you know, that normalcy. You know, like, like I just get... Like, oh, now we can have a garden, or that now we can, you know, watch the Brady Bunch on on radio. <laughs> I, I, just that kind of idea, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, 
Because it's not always, it's always, you know, like, okay, Marines, get in there and kill all the bugs. And then they kill the bugs, and they're like, okay, leave. Uh, don't clean up after yourself. Don't worry about it. I'm like, clean up after yourself. Make that place look nice. Get that bug that bug shit off the walls and let people move in there. Turn it into a condominium or something. I don't know. Restoration project. <laughs> yeah, exa- <laughs> exactly. And that's the thing. In the apocalypse, uh, house cleaners and, and people that... that that do interior design and that kind of stuff, they will be needed because that's how you maintain morale and no one ever explores that in games. They only explore the people that can cook and kill. <laughs> not enough fun to that. You should not actually... Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see the game, you know, build and build to that conclusion, but then the last chapter of the game is just completely different. You are actually playing as those interior designers and made, made services. It becomes like this, this post-apocalyptic Sim City just for like an extra six hours with no explanation. And uh, finally, you can actually have a happy ending because, I don't know, all those post-apocalyptic games, it's just kind of like you left the world slightly better, but let's face it, it's still pretty shitty. So It's pretty shitty. Or maybe you get on your social network and you're like, oh my God, all the people that just annoy the piss out of me, they've died. The world may be a little bit better. You might have you know? a personal personal vendetta against that. You might be a little, <laughs> a little biased with that. But hello, welcome, like the welcome hey. to the horrible show for the first episode for 2014 from HorribleNight.com. I'm Justin Lacey, joined tonight by Aaron McNeil. Don't watch RoboCop vids, kids. And Don't watch them. The ap- apocalyptic stylings of Ethan Moses. Yeah, don't click on that link in a chat. Seriously, you may you may want to actually go ahead and click. Actually, it. Yeah, go ahead and do I'm it. I'm the I'm the bad angel. Aaron's a good angel. <laughs> <laughs> don't watch RoboCop. Well, what? A, yeah, what? A, a, that's where our like good and bad moral settings are, or whether or not you watch RoboCop. <laughs> whether or not you. Well, or not you, you promote or not you watch RoboCop shooting 45 dicks off. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. <laughs> It depends on what RoboCop's doing. Yeah, that's yeah. moral spectrum we're dealing with him. You're always going to watch RoboCop, but it depends on what he's doing. That's what <laughs> yeah. Good Angel says watch this RoboCop. Bad Angel says watch RoboCop shoot off 45,000 dicks. <laughs> Ethan, besides watching questionable RoboCop videos, what have you been up to? Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. It's been a while, man. Like we, uh, it, it's no. The Grimmies was a, a, while a really ago. long time. I think so. I think when we t- the last show we had, I've been had having a little bit of writer's block, um, and so we kind of took a month off um, and just kind of yeah, kind of gathered our thoughts. And and I definitely needed to get back to the point where I enjoyed playing games. Uh, again, um, and I think one aspect of it is I, I kind of distance myself from uh, a lot of new sites and that kind of stuff. You know, I just got back. I just played the games I wanted to play. wasn't worried about new releases and that kind of stuff. And then I told myself I need to write something every single day, uh, which is what I've been doing. Um, so I actually have been spending a lot of time writing, um, making a lot of notes uh, on, <laughs> on the horrible night, you know, a little where we put our post in there. So I don't have a full article done, but I've been putting notes, and, and my whole goal is just you write something every single day. Um, so I've been doing a lot of that, uh, focusing on getting back in shape, too. I, uh, I went home for Christmas and realized that I was the, uh, the fattest guy uh, in the room. So that's not something I've ever been used to. So Were you the fattest the guy on the, on the plane? I, I, I was, yes. Whoa. Well, I mean, yeah, that's I was... Call. Well, there was a dude that was a slightly fatter than me, but I was sitting there and I was putting my seatbelt on. I'm like, man, this doesn't feel too good. And I looked down and my stomach is just like gurgling all over it like a like a blob. And I'm like, okay, I gotta make a change. So and actually, the, yeah, I mean, it was yeah, it was it was bad. I, I I'd gotten pretty lazy and and you know not not a big deal because you can't always be active, but I think it was actually kind of affecting my writing, you know, the kind of the sure. way I was eating and I was drinking a lot and stuff like that. So I've made some changes and it's actually been really, really beneficial. Um, it's made me love life a little bit more. You Aww. know, I just love life. I love kissing and, and, and regardless of if people want it or not. I've seen, yeah, I've <laughs> been seeing some of your, your other projects, your, your energy level is back for sure. Yeah. And I'm really, and, and I'm really pumped to write about games again. Um, I'm just trying Video to, games. I have a lot, see, b- before, <laughs> like, Three months ago, I had nothing to say, but now I have a lot of stuff that I w- want to write about. But, you know, there's another half of me that's trying to be not so, uh, I think, maybe cynical in reference to when I, when I start writing about things and kind of being more 
um, uh, self-aware of, of, of the things I do in writing and the, the aspects of the industry that I could help as opposed to just be like, ah, everything sucks. So I'm really working on that. But, I, I mean, I think things are good. 2014 is looking smooth as hell. Let me just say that. Maybe I'll. Maybe positive, that's what I've been doing. Positive really, attitudes oh, in 2014. Baby looking smooth. good. Ooh, yeah. Real smooth. I think you and I are, might actually talk about it on a future show. Um, but, yeah, I think we we both winded down 2013 kind of on a put your head in the sand kind of a bummer note with everything else kind of going on in games coverage it just i don't know if we like we're just in the day-to-day too much and just got kind of dragged down by some of the attitudes but it just was not a uh the happiness around video games uh was not Mm -hmm. uh seeping through like it used to and uh Mm -hmm. so we're gonna try to put some of that back into uh, 2014 for us anyway. So, because mm-hmm. I've been having a lot of fun, my son. But that's just because I got a I got a puppy, and um, it timed out well with. Uh, it was not planned. Like it, it was kind of. <laughs> it was not a planned puppy. You know, you know, they just kind of sh- just kind of showed up one day. But like it wasn't a long term plan. We've been talking about it for a while, but um, it ended up working out where uh, we got him soon after the new year, and. Um, usually around the Grammys, we take a couple weeks off. We took a little bit longer break this time. And part of that was due, um, want, due to the fact that I got a puppy responsibilities. But the other is timed out with some some a little bit of burnout. Like I wanted to, I I needed a breather from, you know, trying to finish all the games, the the award, the aw- games you need to consider for awards. And I I kind of burnt myself out at the end of the year, and so we've been kind of regrouping. And I, I feel really good about that, and it's really easy easy when you got that little that little puppy running around. But um, the puppy. it's been a long time coming for me though, just 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 to say because I am allergic to dogs, and I just decided that you know what that's just all in my mind. So let's get a puppy anyway. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I have conquered. How, 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 have you really? I mean, your yeah. allergies aren't bad. Yeah, I just ate peanuts every day too. Um, and he and I go lobstering back in the pond, <laughs> and I cook those up every night. What else am I allergic to? Uh, Ooh, no. freshwater lobster. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Just, fresh <laughs> freshwater <laughs> Indiana lobster. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. Stick I don't my arm think straight that's lobster. Poison ivy. <laughs> Ain't, ain't that called crayfish? Yeah. Cray dads. Crawl dads. Cray dads. Cray dads. Get these cray dads out of this pot. These cray dads. There's too many cray dads in this pot. Put them in the pot, these cray dads. Did, uh, did your dog come with the Twitter account? No. Um, but we did, have all, <laughs> we did have all this social stuff set up the week before we actually got him. So That's... Um, it's a cute. It's a cute ass dog. Every time Aubrey <laughs> sees it, she like kind of pouts and like kind of shows me the picture, and I'm like, "We're not getting a dog because you don't know how to take care of animals." And so, like, their dog is is responsible enough to have its own social networking. If we had a dog, I don't think it could rise to that occasion. I follow your dog. He's um, he's good. he's I better. He's better at, I, I was looking for him. He's better at uh, <laughs> social media than me and my fiance combined. So, uh, Tumblr. How so. does he? How does he compare to catwalks on keyboard? He he's got a ways to go. He needs a gimmick. What what kind of gimmick should he have? I mean, other than you make um, him wear a hat. He could help me recover that 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 Twitter account because he got hacked and stolen. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah, he could like be the um, the uh, the police investigator for other pets' social media accounts that have been hacked. That could be a thing. <laughs> Call him up. We'll investigate. That sounds like a lot of effort on my part, though. I don't think he'd really help out. <laughs> that, with that sounds like a ton of effort. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, and uh, another random thing going on that I'm pretty excited about is uh, we're going to start back up doing so, some social events here around Indi- Indianapolis. We've paired up with uh, PureGeekery.net. Um, Nicole over there has had some ideas to get some events together, and some of them are going to be video game related. Others are just going to be more kind of geek interest related. And the first one. I think it's pretty funny uh, going on at the end of the month. Uh, we've got information about it on the site, but we're going to go roller skating and with one of the with the uh, roller derby teams uh, here in town. And whoa, that sounds really random, and really Your fun. Quite quite high on that one, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm hoping that it's exactly like the roller skating rink that I grew up in, and that I could just play Splatterhouse the entire time. Um, oh. I haven't been over there yet, but that's that's what I'm counting on doing. So. Everybody else can I don't know if ass. Spiderhouse is still there. Are you Prop- talking about the, the, the on the east side of uh, Columbus? Yeah, except That's we're gonna yeah, but now we're gonna be on the east side of Indy. I'm assuming all roller skating rinks are the uh, same. 
in their yeah. <laughs> yeah, just and, they've been, and they've been the same for 25 years right that's how that works <laughs> how long has it been since you've really skated or bladed i think skates are i would say blame. i would say over 20 years it's got to be wow yeah wow I mean, I, I was never avid an uh, avid roller skater. I mean, I bought roller blades and never used them. So I bought sure. those like 15 years ago. I remember I was gonna that was gonna be my new exercise thing, uh, maybe 10 or 15 years ago too. So failed experiments. Yeah. So yeah. teach your dog to roller skate. Oh, oh there, there you go. go. There's your there's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's your but there's your gimmick. Is that as cool as a skateboarding dog though? I, don't know. I mean, more skateboarding dogs already been done. Yeah, yeah. you got to you got to do something new. You can throw a dog on a skateboard and push it, but a dog with roller blades has to. It's gonna have some have some finesse, man. I mean, that's gonna that, that dog's gonna look good. I want him to Put, get it. I want him to lead a rollerblading street gang of other dogs. That's oh, dangerous. Shit. All little pocket yeah, knives in awesome. house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, pocket <laughs> oh God, run! <laughs> no, no. All they... these corgis coming down the street. Of you. They're right at Achilles' heel uh, level, too, so that would... Oh, whoa. They, yeah. they only yeah. battle They'll through drop, coordinated yeah. dance. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> While on the blades. Yeah. I'm in. Don't talk about this if it's not going to happen. I'm pretty into this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, what have you been up to? I've been catching up on my backlog mostly, but that's boring shit. So let uh-huh. me tell you about a thing called the Lego Movie. <laughs> what is it? I saw okay, the Lego I, Movie. I was nervous to read any reviews. I don't know why. Like I was so excited for this movie, and like conceptually seemed awesome. And every time I watched the trailer, like I loved it, and then I loved it a little less every time I watched it. The next time. I had the same reaction. I like, but I was like, are these jokes any good? I don't know anymore. I'm just laughing because Batman's on the screen. <laughs> Ah, Batman. There is a song in the movie. What? In fact, really the only song, and that song is called Everything is Awesome, and they do not lie. All As right. My <laughs> wife and I went to see it, and when it let, when that movie ended, my face was somewhere, seats behind me, and I was like, that was awesome. My face said it, not, you know, because it was on my, not on my head anymore. But it was, a, it was a really fun, good family movie. I wasn't surrounded by kids, so that made it a positive. But it was... It was just a ton of fun. The trailers, I thought, were getting to the excessive point. Like, they were going to spoil all the jokes and all the scenes and stuff. But when you see it all together, you kind of just forget some of that stuff. And it's just so charming and fun. And uh, That's awesome. It has a really good story. I loved it. <laughs> I listened to the soundtrack the first day uh, at work. Like yesterday, yeah, I listened to the soundtrack. Really? And while I was working, was I was like, on this that is soundtrack? great. Hooba Stank <sighs> was just... The re- they're playing the reason just over and over again. <laughs> oh man! You picked that ball up and ran with it. I appreciate that. Yeah. No, it's it's got a really it's kind of like a techno, like, just zippy soundtrack. It's hard to describe. Techno I th- zippy. I think people should listen. Pharrell Te- must techno be involved. Zippy. His yeah, Pharrell and his RB hat, just rocking that Lego movie. <laughs> I don't know. He, about... he should get another Grammy. Yeah. Everybody I didn't wants even to get realize zippy. there was a Lego movie out. When did this happen? It yeah. uh, it came out on Friday here in the states. Huh. How'd you miss all huh. that? Because like the the actually I I heard about the Lego Movie by seeing a trailer for the Lego the Lego Movie the game first. Like I saw the game trailer well, for what... f- for the movie, and I was just like the I world the is just wrapped around itself. I don't know what's which way's <laughs> up anymore. I... I saw the game, and then I was like, that's weird. That's a weird name for a game, but what are you going to do? Um, <laughs> but, yeah, clearly it, it made sense. Yeah. So, cool. Hey, love, who doesn't love Legos? The Lego movie, the book. The, the, the book, the game. <laughs> no, the they movie. don't actually put the game on it, but it is a game, and they never explain why they titled it that. Hmm. But they are also sell books. That would have been, been interesting. That's called the soundtrack. The book's called the soundtrack. The, the book is the soundtrack. Yeah. Mm. And it's only available on Amazon if you have a Kindle. I think you should all join me in the uh, in the world of marketing. I think we're onto something. Huh. <laughs> Just roundabout. Yeah. I don't know what I need to own to use this thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great movie. I think people should see it. Cool. I'm gonna buy it on whatever DVD, Blu-ray. I bet something new will come out in two weeks. Get it and on. I'll buy it for that f- format. What when um shit? What was the uh, what's the stupid electronic show? That was a while back, a, couple, a month ago. Used to be a big deal. Tech, tech TV. Not. 
The Shit. Discovery Channel? No, the the big the conference where they announce all the TVs that were never that are never going to come out. Anyway, I forget oh, the fucking like name. CES of it. or something. CES, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, they were announcing. Apparently, somebody announced an 8K television at that uh, event where. 8K. And they haven't even really nailed down the 4K format yet, but. Yeah, maybe you can get the Lego movie on 8K. That's where I was going oh. with it. I just forgot every step along the way to making that point. <laughs> so. I want employees from Lego just to come to my house and then reenact the movie. Oh, I'd like that. <laughs> I just want to play Lego. Actually, I, don't <laughs> I just want to, play, I just want to buy some Legos. I, I think uh, Lego. There's an awesome Lego store here, and every time I walk in there, I just realize how much better my childhood would have been if I had future Legos in the past. I mean, it's incredible. All so much, kinds of stuff. I mean, they just have so much better organization now, and you can go get the pieces you you need if you're missing them. Yep. Yeah. So it's a great system. Uh, I think Nilmar mm-hmm. from Chat's onto something, though. Ethan, have you? Maybe it's called Das Lego Film, in in Germany. Maybe that's why you haven't heard of it. No. No. Okay. That's not what it was called. <laughs> Definitely not call that. <laughs> no, they have an American or uh, American American language English language <laughs> theater here. Um, I just didn't see it previewed, but uh, and I even I even went to the movie. The, uh, what did I see? I saw Anchorman two like two weeks ago, or a week ago. So yeah, I I should have seen it. We're it called Das Anchorman. Yes. Das Anchorman. Yep, all of them. <laughs> yeah. <It's> I, yeah. <laughs> wow. We don't know what the hell to talk about. Aaron, you're up. Give me a game. Give me a game pitch. A game pitch. So uh, people know about the Winter Olympics. We were talking about that before this even started, Sorry. and. And there's a game I need. I really need to get back to called Papers, Please. And that somehow fused in my mind with the Olympics. And I was like, what if there's a game called Medals, Please? And it's just a bunch of Olympians like come up to you and they're like, they want medals from you, but your job is just so hard and thankless and miserable and you got to keep your family alive, but you only have so many medals. Do you have to decide who gets the medals? <laughs> I mean, I know Sochi's <laughs> been bad, but the Olympics went down out. Ha- Downhill quickly when I wasn't paying attention. You just get medal, yeah. medals by asking a dude for them. Yeah. Yeah. Putin's Putin's got your oh, family okay. <laughs> uh, hidden away, and they're they've got bags on their heads, and he's like, "You gotta give out these medals to the right people, but you want to do the right thing and give them to the people that deserve them." And there's a share this toilet with somebody for days. At a they time. got half a yeah. They got half a toilet, and the water's brown. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't even have to. They don't even have to do sport anymore. It's, it's like yeah, they they don't do any. Do we sports. do sport or we just go and talk to this guy? He's like, no, just I'm over here. Don't worry about the sport. I know just, you've been training for a long form time. Form an orderly line. Come I up think, to this booth. Okay, I can, I can actually set. I think I can set this in reality more for you. I think like the Olympics occur as we're seeing them, right? You know, they do their events, okay. they do their podium, they give them the medal, but they take them. What we don't see is they're taking the medals away from them after they get off the podium. They have to like you know on their way out of the country. They have to report into this guy to get their medal, but they have to have all their papers ready to go because, I mean, honestly, if Sochi gets to hold on to some of these medals, that really helps their economy, so they've got some vested interest True. there. Um, so that, I think that's your setup to why you have this line of athletes um, trying to get the medals from this random dude. But what what are the antagonists here? Like, who are who are the other people in line? Like, are they're not... This is. Well, I guess it could be a terrorist situation, but what else could be going There's on? There's always like, terrorism. Reporters? I think reporters posing yeah, as athletes could be a problem. Reporters, yeah. Some athletes are, are evil, and they try to just run through, you know, just Bot- grab a medal. Don't even talk to you. Just grab a medal and just run through, and you got to like unlock the case and get the gun out, and you had to kill an athlete. <laughs> kill the shit. Bob, Bob Costas is in right line in giving giving everybody pink eye. <laughs> Bob Costas, you just rub, he comes up to your booth and just starts rubbing his face on you, and you're screaming, trying to tell you can't well, leave, about, trying to tell your story. The uh, what about the parents of the Olympic athletes who force their oh, children shit. into grueling this is my schedules? Medal. This is my medal. <laughs> <laughs> this is I earned this, but mom, I. <laughs> Sometimes I wasn't a figure send... skater because I had you, you little bastard. Give me your, give me your gold medal. Gosh. You gotta send those parents to jail. Some of this Sochi jail. You bullet jail. Yeah, take yeah, bullet, or bullet jail. It's up to you. <laughs> Putin doesn't care as long as the job is done. There's also gotta be like <laughs> there's gotta be a really complicated section uh with the body scanner that takes away people's ice skates because I feel like those are just and a line full of Olympians is a very dangerous weapons. Are there any other weapons we need uh, to watch out for? People smuggling ice skates in mm-hmm. in their butts. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you gotta say, nope, someone's gotta get these out. You can't you can't get your medal until you remove those ice skates, sir. And one of the uh oh, man. one of the rules for the day is uh curling is no longer a sport, so they don't get their medals. Um And that's when you have to shoot a lot of people because they get really angry. <laughs> Have have you seen some of the the uh, I don't know about the male curling teams but the female curling teams? I've not seen that yet. I remember Holy that being. A, I remember. Shit. I remember uh, the last Winter Olympics. A couple of them were supposed to be uh, pretty attractive. Is that what you're getting at? They're all really attractive. It's okay. like yeah, prerequisite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it a sport? Uh, do we want to give the viewers boners? Yeah, you know, <laughs> was, they, they look. Yeah, they're they're good looking right. and they take good care of themselves. Yes. Curling uh, definitely requires a lot of squat thrusts and lunges before <laughs> uh, you can you can do it. So yeah, I'm, so I'm, is, I support I support it. Is curling the volleyball of these Olympics? <laughs> I think so, the Winter Olympics. Yeah, there's a yeah there's a lot of really beautiful people and I guess ath- young athletes. Are really attractive for some reason, so I don't know. Shake your fist at him, but yeah, geez Louise, it's all, <laughs> also, all these... I'm also <laughs> imagining one of the uh, the bobsled teams going a little bit crazy and crashing the bobsled through the line or through the barriers. Oh, just through the yeah, that, or try to sneak shift. a bobsled up through their butt because that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. all of them like a centipede. Oh, oh god, <laughs> Not, <laughs> there's very very little winter Olympic sports equipment that can fit up your butt. So, uh, let's go ahead and, and see if maybe we can name all the challenge. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to name. Pucks. Uh, mouthpieces. Okay. Pucks. Yes. Skis. Definitely. Skis. <laughs> At least the, the tip of them. Uh, <laughs> trying to conceal only part of it. Yeah. Just part of the ski is hidden. Yeah. That's enough. The guns and the, uh, what's the, uh, the cross country skiing? Biathlon. The, or, yeah. 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 The, um, you could probably get one of those in there. Get a tube up there. Yeah. <laughs> scarves or scarves official. <laughs> scarves. Sc- oh, scarves. <laughs> hey, 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 Rick, come here. I don't know. This dude's his he his butt is full of scarves. scarves. It's full hey, to the max. At least that that opens <laughs> he needs up some help. He really does. That opens up the opportunity for a journey crossover. Because they can. <laughs> go, the scarf gets longer. They can come down during the skiing event. And, they just, uh, they're pulling it. They're like, oh my God, <gasps> dude. Oh, you you don't have scarves where you're from? You know how they have that. <laughs> scarves are not illegal. They yeah. have the dumbass <laughs> mark. as many as you want. <laughs> <laughs> like towels at hotels. They have the uh, the Mario and Sonic go to the Olympics every every time they do the Olympics. Like, mm-hmm. So you could play that game, but the game ends with this medals, please. Scenario. I, I really, I apparently, right now, I really want the like this fun game ending with like a really depressing game that isn't even of the same genre. I want those to be starting to be paired up. I, think I can, could be I can get behind that. I mean, to, to put to get medals, please out there to the masses. We, we'll need some kind of attractive <laughs> Sonic and Mario to sucker everyone in. And what better than Sonic and Mario? It, yeah, it's like yeah. you you make the plea to Sega and Nintendo. You're like, you need to be more indie. So, like, let's take mm-hmm. this Papers, Please <laughs> idea and tack it onto your Olympic game and see what we can they, smuggle they up our butts. You. We have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> what is this? Indie? What do you smuggle up butts? I don't know if we have time for that. It only takes a moment. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll, just... I want to know uh, some of your gaming decisions lately. So, we're going to go over your best and worst gaming decision of the past week or so. And then uh, maybe something uh, something else that you're excited about uh, coming up with uh, with games. Ethan, what have you been up to? What, what are some of your decisions lately? Yeah, so some of the good decisions I've made, like I said previously, is not worrying too much on, on, on staying consistent with the new releases and going back and exploring my, uh, my Steam library. And, and I've... I've been playing a lot of uh, Age of Empires uh, 2 HD edition. Uh, mm-hmm. I played it with my uh, go-to co-op buddy, uh, Matt, who lives in New York now. Uh, and uh, we've we've played real-time strategy games since college when we played... Uh, uh, comp- or, um, shit. Command and Conquer all the time. So we played Age of Empires today. Wait, wait, I can't wait. even think of the... I was, I was going to say Call of Duty. Yeah. In- infamously, <laughs> you skipped a... For a, a, a podcast a long time ago for Command and Conquer Red Alert Two, is that right? <laughs> uh, probably it was okay. no, it was Red Alert. Uh, but Red Alert. I guess my question is, how many Command and Conquer games have you played with him? All of them. Okay. 
<laughs> I think I think you know what I think we missed the shitty ones where it was like robots and the future like Tiberium bullshit, all that b- bullshit. But yeah, dude, we played the hell out of uh, Command and Conquer Generals and stuff like that. And so you know the other day, because uh, you know he and I talk at least once a week. Uh, and uh, we like to play co-op games, you know, and so I was like, oh, you should check out Age of Empires, and he, he got on it, he was like, oh, this is awesome, and so we played that today and just crushed, crushed some Persians, like just crushed them. It was they deserved silly. it. I it saw them fun. in 300. They deserve it. Uh, we, 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 gave them, we, we gave them their comeuppance. I mean, it, it, was, uh, it, was, it was fun, and so, it's, I don't I love those games. I love those games. Did you... You you kind of messaged me in a panic that um, you were gonna we're not gonna be able to get to your article because of this game ran a little bit long. <laughs> no, I was, well, yeah, I was I was writing notes today and 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 we started playing. I was like, ah, shit. Well, I'm like, playing. When video did you games. know? <laughs> when did you know you were in over your head with your Age of Empire session? Uh, probably when I had built a castle and then the Persians sent over. I have nothing against real life Persians, just so okay. everyone knows. Uh, well, not all of them. Um, Some of and them I looked up, and they had el- all these elephants were coming at me. I'm like, oh, because there for a while, they, they were kind of like poking at me a little bit. They were just sending one or two guys to kind of spy on me, and I was just annihilating them. And all these fucking elephants came, and I was like, fuck that. Don't you get your elephants up here. So we just massed our armies, and we just slaughtered those fucking nice. elephants, man. I just, oh, <laughs> man. I know they're extinct. Well, they're they're probably extinct to this day because of the shit that I did uh, to those elephants. It was it was uh, baby elephants, adult elephants. Uh, every I, elephant I saw died. I never it knew the awesome. video games had All that type elephants. of impact on the environment. Yep, yep. Wow. <laughs> I'm so, doing the direct result for that. So you don't need anti poachers. What you need is is people to protect your elephants from me because I'm gonna I'm gonna hit hit them with a trebuchet. So <laughs> from I never, a really long um, distance. I never got into Age of Empires. I tried like. I think I tried the first one that came with our computers back in the day when Microsoft was mm-hmm. just doling it out. Yeah. Um, and then this isn't the free to play one, right? This isn't. No. Oh, okay. That was like Age of Empires. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, how old is this bullshit. game? Is it like a decade? I'm guessing. You know, I think it's about a decade, but the HD edition just came out oh, within okay. the last six months or so. Um, and, and so I, I never, I'd have personally never played age of empires either. Um, but I, I thought it looked cool and I liked the progression. I liked kind of moving through different ages and, uh, there's just a lot of different units you can get and every, uh, of the na- different nations that you, you can choose from. I mean, there's a ton of different, uh, things to choose from. Uh, they all look a little bit different aesthetically and, uh, I don't know. It's it just, it's a good solid strategy game. Um, it's it was right before the point where micromanagement was like the only thing to you know like everybody's like oh yeah we've got to make the name the next Starcraft you know where it was you know because I think a lot of real time strategy games which is why I think that genre sort of died off a little bit is because people wanted it to be you know a, a sport an esport and this was this is not an esport you I mean a, an Age of Empires match maybe looked cool but. Um, uh, compared to you know your Starcraft twos and whatnot, it's not going to be the same thing. So I like those old <laughs> real time. I want somebody games. to just about fun to try to pimp up an old uh, or prop up an old strategy game to get it to be an esport of the level of Starcraft two. Like just <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of what else. Oh. Like you know, Dune all of, all of a sudden shows up uh, or <laughs> Total Annihilation, or Rampart. <laughs> uh, Rampart could be. I mean, there's got to be competitive. I would. Watch I mean, them. honestly, there's got to be some retro games that would hold up. Like, they might not have like, you know, the leaderboard or the like, you know, some of the fancy spancy like online code to get them to actually work. But technically, mm-hmm. like competitively, I think there's some retro games that, that, like, with the right backing, could still make a splash. Oh yeah, it might well, not be Age of Empires two, but I would watch uh, you and Hiddle play Age of Empires two. Because oh yeah, I'm hey, sure you get we, over you get overly excited about elephants and that I'm in yeah and murdering you, them yeah but oh then you, I was yeah, that's a good point he does murder them you sure that wasn't your worst Come decision get elephants oh man I know. elephants I'll Aaron, kill we'll, everyone I'll shoot all your dicks <laughs> off <laughs> and I did I mean I that's well, I, I killed them with arrows <laughs> that's less impressive if it's an elephant dick let's be honest. Like that's oh, I think it's more impressive. <laughs> Since you're huge, it's like <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, that's the, the that's what sh- of all of the like 
difficult the difficulty scale of shooting dicks off elephants are like they're pretty low on that scale well yeah i mean I, you, blue whale elephant those are pretty easy shots to make yeah, so but to shoot it off with an arrow that in and of itself okay. is pretty impressive all right you know what i mean yeah there's some girth there that's what i'm saying <laughs> aaron, aaron what's the best decision you made the best decision I made was to start playing Bravely Default on the 3DS. Hell I started, yes. Hell yes. I had gotten the demo when it first came out, and the first night I played that demo, I was like, seems like a turn-based RPG to me. Didn't really hook me until I realized I just didn't understand how to play that game the fun way, which was like utilizing, like to brave is to use more than one turn in a single turn. Uh-huh. And to default is to like stack up, I guess, the energy required to do that kind of thing. Mike, seriously, they tied it that much into the <laughs> into the title. Yeah, it, it's uh, in the title. <laughs> whatever, it's a dumb title, no matter, the title, no matter what. But. It is a really dumb title, but it's a really fun game. And so when, it, when the demo hooked me and I was like, oh shit, I can attack enemies so many times and there's like a risk reward to do you want to spend all the turns now and hope you just wipe out your enemies or kind of manage your turns once I realized that. And got into the full game. I'm like, this is amazing. It's oh, just, awesome. it's it's like a return to a Final Fantasy game that you actually want to play that is not 13. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is one of those weird games that, you know, they never do early reviews anymore. Like that, it just always throws me off when yeah. those happen. They 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 yeah. they usually don't happen. And people were starting to review this game like a week and a half ago, and I was like, I was like, I want this game. I'm like ready for JRPG, but I can't buy it. This is this is a very weird feeling for me. But um, so I <laughs> I ended up buying it this weekend, and I watched the intro, and then got distracted by something, and that was the end of my experience. But I can't wait to play it because everybody's saying it's just like, <laughs> you know, that it's you not, play it. it's not like gonna reshape the world or anything, but like as a return to form for that genre it's like it takes yeah. all, the, all the classic stuff and if you want more of that when's the last time you get to play something like that so um oh so it is let's see hold on it is it's not developed by square enix that's where i kept like people kept comparing it as the saying it's like the best final fantasy game that's not a final fantasy game and uh yeah i don't know uh do you see who developed it i don't know who did i'm, I'm looking it up so but uh, it does a really weird thing in the beginning, though. Not really so much spoilers, but... Uh, wait, wait. The 3DS... You wake okay, up. <laughs> you wake up. <laughs> it's the classic, uh, well, your character wakes up. The fairy talks Hello, to you. Hello, young man. You've got, you've got amnesia. Let me help you. <laughs> hmm, there is a character of amnesia. But well. <laughs> the 3DS... The 3DS... And I, I completely forgot it even does this thing, but using its cameras and those AR cards... It will actually try to display like a an object in the real world, and the game makes you do that in the very beginning if you want to. And I'm like, oh, I'll you know humor me. It makes you aim it at the back of the instruction book, and then one of the characters from the game will act out a cutscene wherever you are. Like, so I was in my kitchen, which made it really weird <laughs> with her running back and forth all dramatically, kind of explaining the setup of this game, and I was like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> but it was pretty funny because then like a like a chasm opened up and she fell through my kitchen floor and I was like, well, that just happened. I'm ready to play some Bravely Default. Okay, so... But, fun it's, game. It's listing it as developed by Silicon Studio and Square Enix and published by Square Enix and Nintendo. So, for some reason, I didn't think Square Enix was attached Everybody. to it. So, whatever. Everybody wanted to dip their finger in that, didn't they? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, get your finger in that. Oh, makes sense on that. Makes sense on that platform. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah, Smuggle I just... Up your butt. I wanted to... You know, um, what was it last year? Nino Cooney kind of gave me that JRPG yeah. fix, but I like I want to I want a handheld and uh, everything about Breath of the looks, looks great except for the title and their insist- insistence to have some of the main mechanics tie into the title. Uh, that seems a little <laughs> um, JRPG to me, those, but <laughs> those games have awful titles. They always do. But you know, it was funny because last year I felt like you guys were really excited about Nino Cooney, mm-hmm. but then I, I I feel like it dipped off pretty quick because you know, like you know what those games take a couple hours to play yeah they they take a long time to get going they take a long time to finish yeah. and but i think i think most of us liked nino kuni yeah. that maybe the three of us that were playing it but i don't know if any of us actually oh, finished yeah. it <laughs> i don't know if, like, i was gonna like, say that's 
I don't know. I can never get into them. I, maybe yeah. I'm missing out on something, but I just it, like I've always felt like the intros are too long. Mm-hmm. Uh, the build-up missions are too long. You, you've got like a solid, almost like it was the same issue I had with Assassin's Creed Three. It just took too long to get to the actual game yeah. aspect of yeah. it. So I always had that issue with JRPGs. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing out on good storylines and whatnot, but man, I don't know. My, maybe my patience is just kind of going away as as I get older. I've had but, uh, I've had trouble. F- fitting this genre in as far in like really ever since ever since college like as far as Mm -hmm. it's just yeah you know i used i probably you know i dropped hundreds of hours into multiple final fantasy games growing up but i just i don't have those types of play sessions in me anymore like uh yeah um but i don't know like i'll do it for skyrim so i don't know what the what the difference is uh with some of these some of these other games i still still really enjoy them but I don't know. Yeah, I think with Skyrim you can just pause it and be done, like or you save yeah. and be done with it. I feel like these games you you're kind of, you kind of miss Get out on that because the story is a little bit more important. Yeah, yeah, find exactly. that save point. So, I'm sure yeah. this. I mean, if yeah. it's a this might this might work if it's a handheld game. Usually they're they're set up where you yeah. pick it up and put it down. So I'm not. Bravely sure Default's it. very accessible. You can save at almost any time. Okay. It's no I worries. haven't had any problems yet. Cool. And, and sometimes I'm saving multiple times, three minutes, just because of like going to a shop and buying something and saving again. And so it's it's a really good game just to pick up and go. And they even recommend you leave it on because there's like a village building aspect to it where villagers will take like two hours to build something and that will give you benefits in terms of items and weaponry, armor you can buy in the store. So I left my 3DS on for coming up soon on 24 hours Whoa. just <laughs> to have buildings complete. Are you leaving it plugged in? I did that with Cookie Clicker. In. It's like Cookie Clicker. Yeah, yeah. You, you can plug it in. <laughs> it's more games. 3DS battery life. Square Enix taking notes from Cookie Clicker. Oh. I so, can't wait for those uh, evil grandmas. <laughs> Oh man, Grandma Apocalypse! <laughs> I got some of the guys in the office still playing Cookie Clicker. We talked about it at the Grimmies, and they uh, they started playing it at that point, and they're still making billions of cookies a second or whatever it is. Um, yeah, I, I, I got to a point thing. where I had a lot of stuff, and then I looked at what I was doing <laughs> and how excited I was to see my progress. I was like, this is so stupid. So I just I cut myself off from the Cookie good. Clicker cold turkey. Uh, it's probably a good thing because uh, cold cookie. Cold cookie. Yeah. Part of your part of your diet. No more cookie cl- clicker or cookies. Uh, my best decision lately was um, uh, keeping up with The Wolf Among Us. Uh, episode two came out last week, and uh, unlike The Walking Dead, I'm playing these uh, as soon as they come out. I can say that because there's only been two, and I've had four months to prepare myself. So that was a little weird. <laughs> I as great as that first episode was, the fact that they really didn't capitalize on that momentum um, mm-hmm. was surprising. Um, I it'll be really curious to see how fast episode three comes out, but I had a lot of fun in episode two just because, um, like I've said before about the series, I feel a lot more free in my decision making than necessarily The Walking Dead. Um, because The Walking Dead, even if I don't know the story, like I know, like I have an idea of what a zombie apocalypse is and how I want to tailor my characters to try to survive. Yeah. Now I'm just playing some some cop that I don't really understand, and I just kind of, I just kind of go with my gut on every decision, and it's 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 a it's very freeing to play this. And uh, Aaron commented while I was streaming the game that that has kind of led me to be a little bit bipolar uh, with uh, with Big B <laughs> because um, <laughs> just a little, um, you know, the, this is actually more of like a crime investigation game, um, and they're the game kind of opens up with a interrogation scene and you have, you know, you have the option to ask the guy questions or, or, you know, try to motivate him by, um, you know, using evidence or, you know, punching him a lot. And, um, (laughs) you know, I, I'm still figuring out like how that plays into, you know, I have this, when I have the option to like punch a guy or pick up an item and show it to him, I kind of have this multi- multiple step process in my head, like, you know, I'm going to show him this and then I'm going to punch him, or I could punch him, then show him it, and then ask him the question. <laughs> but strap it, that thing to your fist and punch him with, with it. With the thing, yeah, I have all these <laughs> other ideas, but really, the Wolf Among Us just wants you to, you get one choice, and then you're on to the next round of questioning. So um, that was a little tough to figure out on the fly, but also kind of hilarious because I was all over the place. Um, and I'm just, I don't know. I just, I'm not... I don't care, and that's very awesome <laughs> to me. Because usually, yeah. I any game where I can make these types of decisions, I want to craft the story like 
and be very intricately involved in all the details. And I'm just kind of enjoying The Wolf Among Us. And um, other than it be being a little bit shorter than I expected, I really liked episode two, like where the story's going. Um, I felt kind of bad because um, I'm going to post the the final episode of my playthrough uh, on Wednesday. But uh, that the entire last section of that game, I'm... I'm sitting there kind of ripping on one of the characters that's on screen because there's a couple of characters in the game. I just I just don't like them as as people. Like it's not that it's not acted badly. They don't annoy me in the story. It's just like I don't I don't like you. I don't care about your motivations. Let's I want I want my character to move beyond your character. Yeah, and then definitely. it was and right after that like whole scene with that character I don't like, the the episode was over. I was like, oh, I didn't want to end on kind of that that negative note, but um but I like the little the the twists and where the story's been going. So, um, you know, I still would wait and see when these <laughs> what Telltale does with the rest of the schedule for this series. But uh, definitely, when all the episodes are out, I highly recommend checking it out. And uh, um, I can't wait for episode three. Huh. And I've been following along with it too, and I played it uh, that weekend mm-hmm. when they sorted out the Xbox 360 version of the season pass. They had some issues with giving people episode two, but there were some choices I made in episode one that were different than yours. And so I got to see things from a slightly different perspective, but all in all, episode two is a little more, I guess, honed in on its storyline, very little deviation, I guess. Yeah. There wasn't very much the, choice, the crux of it. but I still yeah, like, not a lot of choice. I still like, you know, in the moment, in the interrogations, when you're questioning people, I feel in control of of the tone of that, and I like that. Like, granted, yeah. like you may be funneling you into one or two outcomes from that that won't don't deviate, you know, say as much as some of the stuff in The Walking Dead. But Telltale's kind of proved to me I kind of trust in their narrative, whatever they're going to tell around this. So I don't really, yeah, me I feel too. like I have the choice. I don't really worry about overanalyzing that too much. Um, but as someone that played episode two. Um, how did you feel you handled the nightclub scene versus how I handled it? Were you proud of yourself or did I do it better? I, can... uh, I, I think the most accurate thing I can say is that we did it differently. I mean, whereas you probably went more with what was in your nature, you know, in the <laughs> moment, cause you hadn't seen it before, but I watched you play that entire episode. <laughs> and so when I went into it, I'm like, okay, I, I know it's going to happen here. And what do I want to do? And then my brain put me into a situation of I'm just going to alternate between being nice and being yeah, bad. That's kind of kind of like, you know, I'm giving you a chance to make me stop the bad stuff <laughs> by but being nice. I, but to I got you. The, but I, the, I got this cricket yeah, bat, man. And I had the cricket bat. And how, so, you know, outside of I, I zombie you, how often do I get that opportunity? <laughs> yeah, you don't get you don't. I've never touched a cricket bat once in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, they're fictional to me as far as I know. Is cricket a thing? <laughs> yeah. Now, I just want to be careful. Like, do not project on how I play this game onto how, the type of person I am. I am playing oh, yeah, a... You can't do that. <laughs> no, I am playing uh, my version of Bigby, who is the big bad wolf. So uh, I'm not going to uh, be afraid to show some teeth every now and then. So, nah, that game's really the game fun. Kinda, yeah, the game kind of even sets you up as being the big bad wolf and that a lot of people's perceptions of you are already negative. Yeah. It seems. Yeah. And I don't know so if you're even trying if you to try to play that game. Nice. Yeah. I don't know if you're trying to break that, but that just like they, that's so heavy handed that I was like, no, yeah, like, like I'm not, I'm not a crazy big bad wolf, but like I'm, I'm going to use my strengths man to, to solve this crime. Plus like you've made this kind of personal along the way. So I don't, I don't feel bad about, yeah. I don't feel bad about the people I've hurt so far. That, I, I mean, again, my, as that character, not me as a person, I'm a good person. I don't hurt people. Yeah, me as a person, I hate everyone. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you, Justin, do you feel like you have to start saying that now? Since a lot of your characters well, tend I, to turn into assholes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I mean, always in the, like, you know, the moral choice games, I always go with the evil character first. Cause they're more fun. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Like Aaron, Aaron kind of made me a little bit sensitive to that fact because he watched me play those sections and questioned my de- decision making. We'll see. I'm just kind of <laughs> now. I'm kind of glad I didn't live stream Mass Effect, uh, especially my my Renegade playthrough, because um, that would raise some interesting questions. But <laughs> Ethan, what was your worst decision in gaming? Uh, my worst decision was 
not reading into the fact that Castle Doctrine was not ever meant to be a game. What? Uh, it was meant to be some sort of a statement uh, oh. and getting excited about home defense. I um, here's, I feel, here's the thing that... I, I feel bad because uh, I got excited about that for you. And damn it. You know, I, I like the concept of it. I, I like the idea that you, you're, 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 you've got a defense game where you also have the opportunity to test that defense, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so you're able to go to other people's houses. And then the Castle Doctrine, the whole idea behind it is you're trying to protect your house, your money, your family, um, while also trying to break into other people's houses. And it's a massively multiplayer game. You can... I mean, it's, it's interesting on paper. Mechanically, awful. Um, <laughs> it's not a trap game as much, much as it's a mechanism game. So for people that love to toy around with Redstone and Minecraft, oh, it's probably the perfect game for you, but it, it there's no like immediate like satisfaction with what you're doing. Um, it's got a roguelike element in the sense that if you die, you lose all your progress. Now, in most roguelikes, that works because it's easy to get started, Okay. Uh, looking at Dungeons of Dreadmore, not only is it easy to get restarted, it's fun. You want to see new things, and that's cool. Castle Doctrine, if you made a really intricate you know, defense for your home and you die, you have to start completely over again. There's no saving uh, a blueprint of your house. There's nothing like that. Uh, you have to earn all your money back. And essentially what happens, um, and I haven't gotten... I did not get far enough to get to the point where I had so much money that I, I, I got into this way of playing, but suppose that you're supposed to make so much money that you just don't do anything. You just kind of wait and, 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 and you know, hmm. fawn over your house and make sure... The, the pretentiousness of this game is what gets me <laughs> um, because this is exactly what happened in the indie movie scene right. um, when that first blew up. So, you know, for anyone that likes movies the indie scene in the beginning was independent filmmakers the classification of indie was not there wasn't it wasn't a genre it was just independent filmmakers Mm. and then studios got involved with it and turned it from independent filmmakers to indie is a a mentality indie is a way of of storytelling and that kind of stuff and a lot of those movies came out and they just weren't it. There's nothing good about them. They wanted to make you think, but it was awful. But people bought into it, not unlike people buy into some abstract art that could just be someone shitting on a you know, canvas. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, this guy thinks yeah. that's really good. Um, and, 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 Aaron and bought a few of those. Mechanically, yeah, did you, oh, I was going to say, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, to me, and I, I think it's really interesting because there's some people that saw through that on the Castle Doctrine, um, and there's some people that think it's just, oh, this is really, I mean, there's some really clever mechanics here. And there are some clever mechanics here, but it's 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 broken. It's disjointed. Um, it's, it's not fun. I mean, I, I, also, the other aspect of it is, is if you didn't get in early on the game, so if you weren't one, I mean, when you rob someone's house as you go and they're making more money, their traps are way more intricate. So for you to beat these traps is all but impossible. I mean, there's a lot of trial and error involved in it, and you can't do that because you're going to die. You know, So it's not like you're learning. Um, again, I'm, I'm going to reference back to Dungeons & Dreadmore. You play Dungeons & Dreadmore, you die, you've learned a lesson. You've learned what to avoid. In this game, you're not going to see the same layout of a house. You're not going to use the same kind of tools um, until you make that money. And so it's just this cycle of like, you know, by the end of it, I was making a, a house and I was like, you know, I'm not having fun with this. I'm not going to play anymore. You know, uh, I get the message. We're all greedy as hell. I get it. We care more about money than our families. Like that's like, it was so heavy handed that I just kind of got annoyed by the end of it. I was like, I don't, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with, with stepping outside of the, um, you, you know, what gaming has become as of late, which is, you know, not, super cerebral but to to go and to just be so like like the guy that made this game knew that only like 10 percent of the people were going to get it and that's all he cared about and he was like well that's fine because i'm making a statement of it anybody else is going to you know feel stupid and that's whatnot but i like <laughs> that is not the direction we need games to go and we need games to have good storylines and good mechanics and not validate yeah. either one of them because you can't come up with it you know and so this game just to me it was like so how far into know. playing it did you pick up on that stuff, or did you know that going in? Because I hadn't read any of the side I, stuff with it. I, I heard some weird... 
I read some interviews and some quotes from Jason. Uh, I can't pronounce his last name. Uh, Jason. Yeah, Jason Mraz is, is <laughs> his name. Um, uh, but I, some interviews just where he got into this. He's kind of like huh. he he just got on onto some subjects of protecting what is yours, and he's not the type of person that. Is, should probably be speaking on that. I guess I, I'm going to generalize this as much as possible because I don't want to get in all the interviews. And so he sat, like, when I first saw the Castle Doctor, I was like, this is a good idea. But as soon as he started talking, not unlike a Phil Flit, Fish or Jonathan Blow, it's like, don't talk. Say, like, Jonathan once Blow you start talking, oh, I was, yeah, these guys would probably have great conversations. Um, but, but, and then once I got into the game, I, but I try to ignore that stuff because the fact of the matter is developers spend all their time doing all the, you know, creating these projects, and you know, they're not always ready to explain, they're not going to be able to explain to the casual person exactly how they're feeling, and they can come across bad sometimes, and I understand that. But two hours into playing the game, or maybe it was even an hour into playing the game, I was like, I'm not having fun, and I feel like I'm being hit over the head, and then I thought back to the trailer, which, you know, at first I was like, oh, this is a clever trailer, and then I was like, no, it's not. It's nothing clever. <laughs> You're telling me I'm an asshole because... Uh, you know, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm playing games in a way that I'm not thinking. I don't know. The whole time I just felt like, uh, somewhat demonized, you know, like, oh, this is, gamers are kind of shitty, you know, like modern day humans mm -hmm. are kind of shitty. I'm like, we don't need to keep being reminded of that. There's this anti mainstream movement going on in games right now that I'm so sick of. I, yeah, I'm I, so sick I picked of it. up a little bit. I've just noticed that again recently. Um, just a few of the stuff I've been reading and uh, listening to around uh, like the Dice Awards and how mm -hmm. the, mainly those awards uh, deal with AAA games and the and the, mm -hmm. and the big games and they kind of you know you can't say the word indie around them and I've never picked up on that before I just thought you know I don't know I innocently I kind of look at like you know they gave the game of the year to the same thing we did and you mm -hmm. know we. But along the way, we we talk about uh, indie games and other genre uh, awards, and I never picked up on that with Dice. So that was uh, um, that's gonna be an interesting battle because I mean, I'm I'm sure in the development side, like you look at all the stories of development studios getting started up by you know guys that have worked on uh, a couple guys that have worked on some big game, and then but and they're leaving that giant team. There's, I'm sure there are you know pockets of of developers on both sides that kind of resent the other side. And, uh, mm -hmm. um, I, you haven't really seen that pop up too much, but, um, you might be onto something there. All thing, only thing I want to say about Castle Dro Doctrine, cause I, I got excited about it for you. Um, one, the, the whole mechanic of, you know, you essentially build, build your house, uh, you build and, uh, lay traps for other people to solve. I like that. The aspect of once you've kind of set your house, you upload it and other people get to try to take a track, a crack at it. And, um, you get to see how they performed and you can you know, get money and that stuff that, that way. And you can also go try to break into other people's homes. And then that whole like slightly disturbing aspect of when you try to break in somebody else's home, like their family's there and they have to like mm -hmm. yeah. they react to you. Like the wife has a shotgun and that kind of stuff. Like the premise wise and mechanics wise, that's why I was excited about it. And I thought, you know, that's where the conversation would go. But I, yeah, I didn't even um, follow up on the story he was, what he was intending by this game, because I just thought mechanically yeah. it sounded kind of cool. And in that regard, oh, yeah. in that regard, um, uh, Epic Quest for Loot, that Ubisoft game, that free to play game, they've mm -hmm. been working on, apparently has some of the same stuff as far as you build mm -hmm. a castle and you upload it and you try to break into other people's castles and vice versa. So that might actually be, be more up my alley because it sounds like it doesn't, you know, that game's just silly and. Uh, is building up oh, some yeah. steam, so maybe that one's fun. And uh, yeah, Castle Doctrine, it, it can, it can leave leave the rest of its shit at the door, in my opinion. Well, yeah, and I mean, and I think with the the mighty quest for Epic Luke, Luke, Epic Luke. Hey, it's me. <laughs> but I mean, what's up, Luke? Your reward, like, like the thing. Here's the thing about games: simple enough. Reward your players. Make them feel like, okay, the time I've spent has not been wasted. That's all you have to do. And roguelikes do that because uh, when you do do well in that, okay, you're like, oh, great. Like, I'm, I've, I've beat the game. That was tough. You know, I remember beating FTL. That was great because that took a lot of time. But the whole time I played, I learned something new. This game doesn't reward you for doing anything. It, its point is for you not to keep doing anything. And I'm like, that's not a game. That's... 
you know, a pretentious conversation you have at a bar with someone that you're too, uh, you know, insecure to argue with, but you can be passive aggressive the whole time. You know what I mean? Like that's just, I don't know. It, it's a missed opportunity, and uh, you know, I'm sure people will be like, "Ooh, fuck you, dude!" But you know, I'll fight you. I'll fight everybody. No, I'm just kidding. I won't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't buy that game. Don't wait. It's 11.99, and the whole bullshit. And he had an interview about not <laughs> selling games at discount. All this, like, yeah. dude, get with the Pro, who are you? Who, Everyone's yeah. doing that. <laughs> I mean, no one's, no one's. There's, there's people that are like, I only want to spend five dollars for a game. There's people like, I want to spend, you know, I don't want anyone to have my game. Yeah. On. It's just like, what is? I don't know. Get with the program, man. Get with it. You're, you're, you're so disconnected. You haven't. I don't know. I, he's, he's made some a few critically acclaimed games, but I don't think he's in a state where he can start kind of like judging the Steam sales, which have made a lot of indie studios a lot of money. Based on these huge discounts, so mm-hmm. uh, so I I, not, I wasn't trying to be too negative. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not where I was going with that. I was like trying to find things we can improve upon, but uh, yeah, but I had yeah, I had no idea of the backstory there. Uh, Aaron, yeah. uh, what was your worst decision? Was it uh, does it have like a side story quite as interesting as that? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my worst decision was revisiting a little game. Starring Miss Ellen Page called Beyond Two Souls oh, for the first the, time. Was it the Last of Us. I, I mean, no, I mean, happened. The Last of Us. <laughs> Juno, Juno, the movie. Jokes of the never game. get old. <laughs> and so I started playing it this weekend and trying to get used did, to hey, the controls. And, did you rent huh? it? Did you rent it or did I, you buy it? I rented it. I rented okay. it. I do not own mm. this game. And so after I got over not being able to press X to shout Jason in the beginning, I. Uh, I got to the point in the game where whatever her name is that I've already forgotten goes to a birthday party and she wants to be a normal teenager and fit in with everyone. And I kind of heard stuff about this birthday party before and people were like, oh, did you, know, did you, did you terrorize those kids at the birthday party or did you not do that? Yeah, I'm Aaron, like, hmm, did you terrorize those kids at the birthday party? Did you terrorize those kids? And so I got there, and I tried to fit in, but I tried to also keep my distance, already knowing I'm like, these kids are kind of are maybe going to try to be assholes. They're, they're all, some of them are giving me a little bit of shit. Like, they give you a task to go turn the music on. And I'm like, oh, this is like the worst task to give, like, the outsider, because I'm sure they all love some be, stupid You do some you know, investigate and figure out what type of music they like. They're, it, I wasn't going to Was there an option to say, long like, enough. hit X to ask, <laughs> what are the kids into these days? <laughs> what do you guys like to listen to? It doesn't matter. Put in Richard Marx, you'll always win. <laughs> always brings the party. Always Richard Marx. And so I, I entered uh, some George Carlin you know, <laughs> comedy, and they were like, "What the fuck is <laughs> now?" <Nah>, so, <laughs> so I went over there, and I had some simple choices, like genre choices, like you could play the pop, or you can play rock, the pop. you can play country, or just leave the whole damn thing alone. And I was just like, "Just sit there well, and twerk." Yeah, just sit there. And twerk. <laughs> so, oh yeah, her name is Jody. So she, I have her lean in there, staring at the stereo, trying to make a decision like, what do I want to listen to versus what do these kids probably want to listen to? Fuck those. And so kids. I'm like, I'm just gonna play rock, and like rock seems fine enough. Like country, country subjective, pop is subjective. I feel like rock, we can all get behind this. Rock. As soon as the rock starts playing, this girl Air walks guitars. over to me and goes, "What is this old stuff you're playing? Here, let me let me take care of it." And I immediately, I want to reach through the screen and just choke her out right there and at this other girl's house, just just fight this chick. Like, hey, I put rock on. It was my task. You were asked to what go unfold some chairs or something. Fuck Get away you from for the not stereo liking Bon Jovi before I stab you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what rock song was it though? It was just some generic, you know, not oh, nondescript. It? You know, we're, we're making a video game. And we don't want to license music. <laughs> <laughs> was it E6? We, we spent all our money on Willem <laughs> Dafoe. We can't, it was, we can't it get was any music. Willem Dafoe's band <laughs> playing some rock. And so she changed it to pop. I was mad, but I'm like, okay, okay, I'm not going to let this affect anything. And so they start asking me some questions, and I'm like, eh, yeah. they're like, we hear you're, like, you, work with my, you work with my mom in the lab or something. I'm like, yeah, whatever. And we hear you got some powers, and I'm like, I, I don't want to talk about that. Don't ask. And don't, so this, I just met you. Don't ask yeah. me about my powers. I'm like, don't ask me all these personal questions. And so I kind of just, you know, walk around the room, get a feel for what's going on. This guy starts talking to me, and he's trying to be all nice and charming. And I'm like, dude, 
I'm a man in control of this female character. I know what you're getting at here. <laughs> and so I'm put I'm putting up walls like he's like he's like, You wanna go slow dance with me? And I'm like, Yeah, sure, whatever, I'll go fit in, but I got my eye on you, man. And so we start slow dance into this dumb pop and dumb pop. he's asking me he's like, Oh, you're really pretty and like you have the option to either return the compliment or kind of just shrug it off. Yeah. And I'm like, why would I? What am I gonna tell him? You're you're really handsome, man. I just met you. And so I'm like, <laughs> you're oh, a thanks. handsome man, man. <laughs> you're, you're, you got strong arms. <laughs> so I kind of shrug him off. And then uh, at a certain point, his hands start to gravitate down towards your butt, and you have an oh. option to let him do that or to just you know put his hands back where they were. And I immediately am like, no, you don't don't Press you dare. Square. Press square to protect the butt. Yeah, press hey, where to protect some the ass. hands away from my butt. <laughs> get your burly arms away from my get burly. Away. Get your burly hands away. From I my said you have nice butt. arms. Your hands are <laughs> decrepit and ugly. Yeah, so Why I should are you putting there. scarves into my butthole? <laughs> <laughs> That's where I keep my scarves. <laughs> That's it. He's, he's after my you scarves. Want sc- yeah. You want a scarf? You have to ask. Yeah, ask. <laughs> I don't just give these away. You got to get permission. Butt scarves. <laughs> and so I shut him down there. He tries to lean in and get a kiss. I shut him down there. I'm like, dude, this dance is over. Yeah, like, you get Put away from rock. me. Rock. <laughs> and I switched it back to rock. And so uh, you get to the, it's the birthday party, like I said. So you get to the part where the girl's opening gifts. And What'd you get the her? First, the gift card? So Willem Dafoe gives you the gift that you're going to give the girl. And he's like, oh, it's a book of old Edgar Allan Poe poetry. It's a rare book and she'll like it. And I'm like, he set me up to fail. <laughs> yep. With these Fucking kids Defoe. I don't know. <laughs> Fucking Dafoe. <laughs> and so they open someone else's gift. And it's something stupid and dumb. And the girl's like, oh, this is amazing. And I'm like, oh, shit. Don't open my gift next. And so then she opens it. And she's like, what is this? This is just and so. Yeah, Ellen Page has to describe it. Oh, it's a really rare book of poetry. It's like it's, it's rare. She like, keeps emphasizing it. it's rare because really the only like it's positive not, it's thing to say good, about it. It's not any good, but it's rare. It's rare. You know, it's gonna be worth a lot of money. You could pay for college by selling this book, I think. <laughs> and so she's like, "Oh, what are you trying to do to me?" And I was like, "God, I can I just leave this party?" <laughs> <laughs> and so point. then the kids all gang up on me. They start tormenting you and they lock you under the stairs. And then this is where, uh. The ghost entity, Aiden or Iden or whatever. Aiden, yeah. This is where he comes into play. And so he lets you out from underneath the stairs. And you have the option to get revenge or just leave. And I'm like, no, we are not leaving this house until kids are messed up. (laughs) (laughs) And so he locks them in that room, flies in there. And what happens afterwards is so... It's so fulfilling, so cathartic that it should be illegal. <laughs> and evil. I'm sure. It's, just, it's so evil, yeah. And so the the kids are sitting around the cake. They're about to cut the cake. Wait. And the first thing I do is just blow that cake up in their faces. <laughs> and they're like, oh. And they, like, they blame I, it on each other. Like, what'd you do? And he's like, I don't know. I officially it's, am no longer yeah. worried about Aaron judging me. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving you ample ammunition for... <laughs> what makes me feel good. <laughs> and so the kids, they're, they're stunned by the cake exploding in their faces. And so what? then I it's flip totally the table funny. over and then they, that's when they start to catch on that, whoa, stuff is happening now. And so they start, they start to panic. They try to leave. The door is locked. Yeah, and then all of a sudden I'm like throwing chairs at them. It's a um, wrestling match. Lamps, anything that's not nailed to the ground suddenly takes flight and is aimed straight for any child that I just want to get revenge on. So yeah, chairs, tables, books, pots and pans. I any mean, there ladders? are things I wanted to throw and it wouldn't let me throw, but I, like, I wanted to smash cage. the TV. Ladders, elephants. Got a promo. <laughs> could, could you throw kids at kids? I, uh, they wouldn't let me, but I would have been... Yeah. I, know, I mean, why wait? You know, cut out the middle, man. Just throw the kids at the other I kids. I now think <laughs> the kids the kids. I needs to be the ghost of a professional wrestler. Oh. Body slam, yeah, body slam that birthday girl. DDT, oh yeah. A nice oh, yeah. pile driver. <laughs> so yeah, so then she got, oh! oh no, the backbreaker. <laughs> and so like the mother comes back and the the birthday girl's like saying I'm evil or I'm the devil or something and Willem Dafoe's got this shock looked on my face like, and I'm like, Dafoe, what did you think was going to happen when you gave me this book as the gift? <laughs> Dafoe, you fucked up. <laughs> Dafoe, you fucked up. <laughs> You, you did up. this. 
Edgar Allan Poe? That's all. I How old were the kids? If I played that game, that's all I would be. I would just come on, Defoe. Defoe. You meant the well. What the fuck are you doing, Defoe? You're a terrible you father, Defoe. <laughs> father figure. You fucked up, Defoe. Father figure. So yeah, it's it's a pretty fun scene. It's a <laughs> it's it might be all you need to play of that game. I played a little bit more of, of it, but that's the part that stands out so, to me is just tormenting children. Yeah, I was going to say, so it's your worst decision because you kind of re- regret the uh, the evil that you caused, I guess, but it was so much fun. It, doesn't matter. <laughs> it, was, it was so much fun. Like, I, <laughs> I could have just walked out. I could have walked out and been the better person, but I was like, nope, these kids aren't real. They're getting messed up. Even if they were real, I probably still would have done it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> kids. Listen, I'm, I'm totally fine with you uh, judging me now, so it's uh, it doesn't bother me a little bit. Um, my worst decision is uh, I waited to play Jazz Punk. I still haven't played it yet, and um, I didn't do really that. realize what the game was or that it was coming out last week when I was kind of making my plans to uh, play some other games, and uh, I made I just made the wrong choice. That was obviously the the new release to play last week, and um, I purposely stayed away from your stream because I wanted to. I mean, that game is all comedy. It's all with yeah, basically, it's... it's like a gone home type game with jokes endless jokes um that are basically just endless irreverence irrelevance whatever all the errors (laughs) the game just goes on and on just anything that happens in that game is probably funny (laughs) it was a couple hours long it was yeah i finished it um not too long after i think you left the stream so you you, I pretty much I was more than halfway through the I game. I saw at that you point. like were you vacuuming bugs in a kitchen, but the bugs were like a little uh, yeah. or something. It was just it was just weird and I like weird and I've heard good good things about the you know, everybody kinda of talk about how hard it is to do comedic writing for video games and that this is one of the better ones. So um I don't know, it's just uh that little genre around uh, I don't know, Gone Home, Stanley Parable, uh is getting kind of interesting, and this is another one to throw into, into that into that basket. So, um, I may yeah, I chose the wrong new release, and uh, not not to take anything away from Aqua Kitty because I enjoyed Aqua Kitty, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Jazz Punk was the um, uh, I'll, I'll need to circle back around to that soon before it. I, I don't know those those games are those like two hour games are they easily get pushed back to the backlog, and then a couple yeah. months go by, and you feel I don't know there's no. There's nobody to talk to about it anymore, so I need to finish it while uh, people are still just, buzzing about just it. Just put on your fuzzy slippers, get a bucket of popcorn, and play jazz punk. All right, all right. Can I get some drinks, too? No, no drinks. Nope. <laughs> all right. You fucked up, Defoe. No drinks. <laughs> no, Defoe? <laughs> We're just 7-Up. I told you kids I'm 7-Up, Defoe. <laughs> you have one job, Defoe. Just 7-Up. <laughs> just bring us some 7-Up, Defoe. Is that diet sprite? You fucking dick. <laughs> go back, go home, Defoe. Take your bow with you. <laughs> what are you doing, Defoe? Do they make lemon lime Defoe. slice? Is that a thing? I know they do the orange slice. What's the other? What's the other? There's got to be sp- Sprite Seven Up. Com- what's the like Sprite Seven Up competitor? What's the like the lesser one? Oh, Sierra Mist. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, well, I felt like there was a. Oh, doesn't matter. Um, Ethan, what are you excited about coming up? Um, you know, I've been playing uh, a lot of Grim Dawn. I kind of talked a little bit about it uh, a while back, but it's still an alpha. I got through the first act, which is what's been made available, and I'm I'm really digging. It. I I I think it's funny because I, I can go through these phases of getting tired of action RPGs and then liking them again. And um, I really love the aesthetic. I I think it's kind of cool to play a gritty. RPG again, um, one where no one's really happy. You're not. You never fight smiling raccoons or you know fluffy clouds or anything like that. You just you fight corpses and demons. And yeah, I mean because Path of Exile was way too happy. Well, Path of Exile <laughs> is is yeah okay. So Path of Exile was pretty pretty uh, grim. So it was pretty grim. But, but I think the thing with Grim Dawn that I like is Path of Exile to me got to what which it's a really good RPG, mm-hmm. but it is a grindy action RPG. That's sure. kind of the intent of it, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas Grim Dawn to me feels a little bit more open. Um, you know, either there's side quests and that kind of stuff that you're doing. Uh, you've got a hub that you're working out of. There's things to discover. Uh, so it, cool. to me, it feels a little bit more complete. Are you going to get as much replay value out of it? Uh, more than likely not. 
uh, compared to Path of Exile. Uh, and Path of Exile is still a strong game, but I, I just I really dig Grim Dawn, and it, it's a completely different look and a completely different time period. I mean, it's it's a uh, what is it the 1800s esque sure. aesthetic. So there's guns and there's uh, swords, oh. but you're basically your armor's scrap and and, and fur coats that you've scraped together to like I mean it's 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 a cool aesthetic fur it, coats it, it are really wrong, Ethan. well it, they keep you they keep you warm though <laughs> oh in the apocalypse fuck come on come on PETA I'm, like, I'm not gonna put that on it's cold out you'll put it on <laughs> you dick I got some I got some the, damn zombies out here the lone member of PETA that survives the apocalypse and is trying to still enforce their agenda oh that'd be awkward <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, uh, you guys, by the way, have to shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut up, Pita. <laughs> so, Defoe, get him out of here. Defoe. Grim Dawn, <laughs> still, it's still early release, early access, mm-hmm. right? Um, mm-hmm. Have they? Have you seen, are they talking about any ramp up to a full release? Should I Should I wait at this point? Or should I dive in? I, I would wait. Okay. I would wait a lot. Of, I mean, uh, it's been cool to see the improvements of it because, and I, I jumped into it because I, I just liked, you know, I like Titan Quest. Um, and I, I, I kind of like the feel, and I like I wanted to see how this game progressed, and it's been cool to see some changes they've made to it. Uh, the graphics look like they keep getting better. The game uh, feels smoother, uh, and and so I, I'm like, okay, for me, it's kind of cool to see that progression. But for most people, I would say give it another year. I think it's still probably about a year off. You know, Isn't that crazy. Uh, you yeah. only got the act one. You know, I mean, it's it's, but they're taking their time. Cool. Uh, the community's doing a good job of finding the bugs and that kind of stuff. So and I mean, it's, I'm, um, I'm, I, does it have any free to play? Or microtransaction stuff built in? No, it, okay, nope. it's just it's a you, you buy the game and and, yeah. it, and based on I mean if you're looking at Path of Exile like uh, Grim Dawn I believe is twenty nine ninety nine or thirty nine ninety nine so I mean if you're not really into the genre I mean I'm really into the genre I realize that more and more every day so but um, that's it, in between it, Torchlight and Diablo. Yeah, yeah, right there in the middle, and I think that's I mean you know, Torchlight too was I think Torchlight is un- underpriced. I mean, but it, yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, if if you're looking for something new and, and you really like to click on things and get treasure and uh, you know, I, I would <laughs> I, I, I don't know I dig, it. I dig it. it and I like how they're not just putting you down a hallway because a lot of action RPGs have gotten in the habit of you're just walking from point A to point B, but you do it over and over again. This game is kind of letting you branch out a little bit. Uh, it doesn't you know it doesn't hold your hand while you're playing either. So I, I do I definitely appreciate that. Cool. Aaron, what are you excited about? I'm excited about a thing that you wrote on here for me, which is <laughs> Warframe. That's <laughs> how I roll as host. I fill out your notes for you. Don't leave any holes. So, yeah, just do all the work. And so, uh, yeah, after watching you and Coop play Warframe a bunch and not still not getting it to work on the computer that I want it to work on, mm-hmm. I played it on my laptop, and I'm like, I've only done the tutorial. I want to see if I even like this game. And then... I think, it, I think it was the same day, that same Thursday you were streaming, you, you guys had left, and next <laughs> thing I know, it was I almost like, myself now. it was late. Yeah, it was. I was playing solo, and it was late. I'm like, I need to go to bed, but I want to play more Warframe. I want to be better. I don't want to be a zero anymore. I don't want to be like Defoe. And <laughs> so... <laughs> and so I was playing over... <laughs> it's just Defoe. Defoe. <laughs> And so I played Fuck. some over the weekend. I mean, Justin, you and I got to play just part of a match. I didn't realize yeah. you had invited me because I alt tabbed out. I and yeah, you actually played the full it. thing. I was just kind of messing around at the beginning. So you oh, that the was the full mission. thing. Okay, I didn't realize. So yeah, it was cool that we got to play a, a level together, and I was I knew what I was doing. I had uh, some mods on me. It's kind of a it's a fun game. It's mm-hmm. nothing like out of the ordinary, I guess, in terms of it's not yeah, it's not you know, exceptional anyway. It's just, but it's just pretty cool. It's pretty cool, and it's just kind of fun. You can you can run and slide, and you can jump kick space, sometimes. Space ninjas, and you're in space. You're in space ninja. Yeah, they're space ninjas. Uh, I need friends. I, I I played it a couple times. I need friends. It's, it's not I, in a long So I'm game. trying to figure out. Uh, Coop and I are trying to figure this out. It might work later. Four people seem to be a little bit overwhelming. Like I really like, uh-huh. I really like playing two people. I I want to try it with three and see how that balances out. Um, but at and we keep playing through the same intro sections because we started over um, uh, with our Warframes. And we're going to, I think we're going to probably play Warframe for the next, uh, at least a couple times a month uh, going on on our Thursday co op streams. Um, so be on the lookout for that. But so we're leveling our guys up. And I'm interested to see how the later stuff goes. But um, 
but yeah, I really like, I've started playing the game a little bit solo. I kind of like the stealthy nature of it or just like trying to basically when you get spotted, trying to kill all the dudes before they set off the alarms, that the kind of speed and challenge there, I'm really getting to the melee combat in the, uh, it's got some parkour, uh, um, parkour, parkour navigation to it. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, I, um, I, I dropped some more cash into it this weekend. I uh, got another Warframe and got some other cool guns. Like, I'm not trying to spend too much money on it, but like the way I'm kind of approaching these free to play games, I keep revisiting. I'll, I'll kind of look at it like I'll spend as much as I would if I was subscri- subscribed to the game if it was like an MMO. So I usually yeah. give myself a five or ten dollar budget a month, and I try not to spend multiple times. But that's just that's just my personal approach. And got a couple of cool guns. They're doing weird things, and I don't know. It's just the game's just fun to play. Uh, because the the I don't know the 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 action's just enjoyable and uh, yeah it's got a fun feedback loop to it mm-hmm. and, the and uh, I might I might do the same thing you're doing like dropping those five to ten dollars into it I mean if we if we stick with it and it sounds like we will I might want to spruce up my Warframe because I feel pretty lackluster in comparison to the two of you <laughs> yeah so what we figured out like so you you know your your weapons level up and your warframe levels up. We just bought new warframes and we're using our p- kind of powered up weapons. So um, trying to get that balance, I can appreciate that. Like I always like to be around the same level as the people I'm playing with. So um, we we can mix and match and figure that out. But I read up on it and kind of figured out how the mod system works. And it's you know it's not the most straightforward thing in the world, but I don't know the kind of low barrier of entry with it being free to play. It's hard not to recommend it. Uh, to anyone and i and i guess coop tried it out in the playstation 4 and the inner the the hud even looks better on that system so um i think you'll see warframe mm-hmm. for the next couple months here we're pretty excited about it warframe for life and then speaking of live streams i'm a, i'm just kind of excited to get back into live streaming and uh you know we've got we've got warframe going on uh we're going to try out planet side 2 um for the first time in a long time this thursday so if you guys want to play with us um, we'll be on on Thursday, starting at 10 p.m. Upgrade Eastern. your game, <laughs> but yeah, upgrade your game because they did some massive patches to it. So I've even got to double check that. I mean, we're ta- probably talking, you know, eight, twelve gigs of updates, um, if not oh, more. Oh man! Um, and then I'm going to be streaming The Witcher 2 this weekend. Uh, missed missed my opportunity last weekend, but real excited tonight. I'm going to stream Metal Gear Rising Revengeance because um, way back when it had its console release, uh, I did a game curious video of it of the demo. And um, I was really, really bad at the game, like terrible. Uh, I blame Devil May Cry for that because it, Devil May Cry is very much offensive, stylish action. And apparently, I missed this in the tutorial. Revengeance is more about like parrying in defense. Um, yeah, using this, and uh, a whole lot. I'm not very good at that, so I'm looking forward to uh, streaming and struggling until I figure it out, and then having ridiculous Metal Metal Gear stuff happen. So. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about a couple of these games and, uh, I'll be sticking with them for a while. So, um, a final pitch. Let's see. What do I got? What did I have earlier? Oh, so we've been playing, uh, been doing, still doing our weekly arcade challenges and, uh, started to do like interview videos and that kind of stuff with it. And last week's game was a big hit, uh, Robotron, Robotron 2084. And, um, I kind of want to revisit that that genre because um, I was talking about that game and then um, Puppy Games, uh, they released Ultratron last year, which is kind of mm-hmm. a homage back to that game. And then looking at the actual plots for these games, they're really messed up. Um, Robotron's plot like essentially just says, save the last human family. One, it doesn't tell you if you're also a human or a robot, but like there are just tons of robots. This is the last human family. And I started thinking, I was like, even if you save them, like, what's step two? Like, are we trying to repopulate the earth? What's, how's this going to work? That's kind of grim. And then mm-hmm. Ultratron goes a step further. Like, you are, you are playing as the last, the last human consciousness. You're not, you don't even have a body. You just, you actually can possess other robots and you transfer your consciousness from robot to robot to robot to try to basically take revenge for for the human race but the human race is dead so mm-hmm. that being said i want to i want to play the game that leads up to these two scenarios like we obviously lost the the war against the robots to set all this stuff up 
but I kind of want to play as the robots destroying the humans. And, uh, but I want it to be kind of in that Robotron style. So a twin stick Whoa, shooter. That's grim. So like the reverse, Dude. like maybe you're the first like robot that is just, I don't know, um, being attacked by a bunch of soldiers and you do the twin stick shooting to, to, to mow them down and, and overpopulate. Wow. I see how I see. Oh, I see Terminator had a different sort of impact on you. <laughs> <laughs> I was also thinking back to like, you know, how zombies are in every game everywhere and they're like in, in movies and comic books. Robots have kind of fallen off as far as the, you know, the upcoming threat, but I'm, telling you at robotron 2084 we've got 70 years before ultimately this is where we're headed and i think the first step is the oculus rift and then from that point on we're going to get um the robot technology is going to kind of advance from there so we could be in trouble so we're going to get plugged in and then wiped out i think so and then programmed to shoot off all the dicks oh man (laughs) Just don't want to shoot my own off. That wouldn't be good. Oh no! There's, I'm sure there's some protocol. Or, or maybe, maybe they just remove it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably would. Or maybe Ethan, um, an apocalyptic game that centers around um, the robot apocalypse. Like as far as yeah, that hasn't really been. I mean, outside of the Terminator Salvation spinoff, like your um, game, like your State of Decay, except it's the robot apocalypse. That would be cool. I, I you know what? I would love. I would love. State of Decay, but in the Terminator universe, uh, that would be awesome. That would be that okay. would be awesome. Uh, I, take it, take it. Okay, I'll take credit as Terminator that was my original <laughs> idea. Let's forget all the Robotron setup stuff, but that's it's uh, a good idea. Let's <laughs> remake really all these po- like oh all these post apocalypse games and put the robots in them. You know what I want? To go back to a real quick game pitch. Did you see the movie Virus? No. Uh, I was a, basically it was this uh, AI that could assemble creatures out of human flesh machinery all this kind of stuff watch the movie virus i want a game that is that that is your enemy it's it, it builds i mean it was think about zombies with robot parts but then they, they would just turn in these like you know, they'd have chainsaws for their hands oh, and like all kinds of stuff like it was it's a badass movie check it out but that's think- that is the game i want i wanted a, a, a continuously evolving uh, uh creature creatures that can like assemble you know, offensive and defensive measures based mm-hmm. on like the junk they find around them or the bodies or whatnot. Yeah. I think like cool. you could bring along the zombie fans. If you did that, like that transitional game where it's mm-hmm. kind of zombie robots, like robots mm-hmm. that, that take advantage of the zombies and, um, mutate into this just terrifying metal zombie race. And then, and oh, then, then we can cool. make the leap to robots. So I think we yeah. painted our path. So that's good. <laughs> um, we're going to get out of here uh, with new releases and then uh, do some uh, uh, headline shout outs here. Um, but as far as new releases go, I'm just going to run this down. Um, big releases for the week. Lightning Returns Final Fantasy 13. That's on consoles. Um, 2K and um, Bethesda teamed up for some ridiculous bundles. We got uh, a Skyrim bundle and a Bioshock Infinite bundle. Skyrim, Skyrim and Bioshock Infinite is one bundle, and then Dishonored and Borderlands Two is another bundle. It's out in stores. So, um, Far Some Cry compilation bundles. on PS3 and Far Cry, Cry Classic on um, XBLA and PlayStation Network, and then World of Tanks. I thought that was already out for the 360, but I could be wrong. Uh, Metal Slug Three is out on the PC. That's really random. Um, a complete edition of Civ, Civ Five. Another release of Witcher 2 on the 360. And then the uh, the Last of Us Left Behind DLC, that's out this week. Yeah. And, um, and then Descent showed up on uh, on, on PC. <laughs> so, oh, boy. I just saw that, too. That's weird. Anything catch your eye? Steve is flooded. Uh, uh, Descent did, but not like in a like yeah, positive like a... way. I was just like, what? <laughs> I kind of had the... Uh, <laughs> I kind of had the same moment with the uh, the Far Cry Classic release that it's out on on just the the arcades on the consoles. I was like, "What the? What about the PC?" I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah it's already out there. Like it was a <laughs> PC game. It still is on Steam. You can go. You don't need a classic release of it. It's still there." Yeah. So, um, yeah. I want 
I want a Far Cry classic like redone with the new engine. Honestly, like oh, just, that would be awesome. That would be good. And then change the ending and like the lead up to the ending. But uh, yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> what about you, Aaron? I'm excited because it's been months since I finished The Last of Us to try out this DLC. I've skimmed some articles. I don't want to get too, I guess, into spoiler territory yeah. with what's going on with Ellie and her former best friend. But I'm here. There's probably some good potential there for. It's uh, kind of a. It's kind of a prequel, right? Yeah, it's like it's a, Not- it's a prequel to um, before Ellie gets with Joel yeah. on their road trip across the zombie trip. town. <laughs> <laughs> Road trip across zombie town. I don't know. I was just picturing like Hollywood getting a hold of The Last of Us and just completely missing the point and then forgetting the fact that there was another movie named Road Trip and just calling The Last of Us Road Trip. Just call it, call it Road Trip. <laughs> had to kill zombie Tom Green. Yeah, Scotty doesn't know. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm excited. I mean, we still never played multiplayer, which so is actually fine with me. We can do I that. Mean, I don't mind. We can do that. Yeah, I can stream that. At some shit. point, we'll do that. Yeah, I can stream April we'll, April first. <laughs> let's do that. Um, put that on the list. Um, shout wait, outs, call outs again, Ethan. Part of our theme of just not being too negative this year, not getting caught up in the bullshit. Um, just good things going on in the industry that you want to give a shout out to, and then and something you want to see changed or improved is what we're going for. Okay. Uh, so just a quick shout out, uh, Darkest Dungeon. It's on Kickstarter right now. Uh, looks awesome. Uh, it's gritty, cool. r- roguelike. Um, uh, man, I don't even know how to describe the game. But I mean, I it think looks kind of like roguelike. Uh, I mean, I mean, turn based, turn based combat. But like a lot of roguelikes are just one party member and it says four party members. It the, looks, um, it's cool, but. The, for lack of a better term, the camera angle is cool. Like the perspective they went with. with... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the and the art style is awesome. Mm. It's like that old medieval, like you know, etching type uh, look to it. Uh, and um, I, one aspect of this sounds really cool is that your characters are affected by what they're doing. So like they may go kind of crazy, or they may get scared of creatures, and like th- there's a whole like a big mental and physical like deterioration that's happening uh, to your party members. I-, I I think it looks awesome, and I'm I'm super excited for that. I- I'm going to uh, support that Kickstarter. I would check it out. I mean, it's doing well. It's gonna it's gonna meet it. It's already met its goal right now, so it's, nice. it's trying to make its way up uh, the other features. So. Um, and then call out wise, um, you know, uh, Dungeon Keeper came out. People are pretty disappointed. Uh, a lot of people are spending a lot of time and energy complaining about that. Guys, just don't play it. Like, just don't <laughs> play it. Don't, <laughs> don't don't worry about other people playing it. You know, there is a. I think we have to come to the realization that there is a demographic of gamers that we're not included in, uh, and, and the mobile the mobile gaming is it may not be. You, you, to be a hardcore gamer or whatever you want to call yourself, you're not gonna get. Not every game is going to be made for you. If you don't like a game, you're spending so much energy being upset about a game that you'll you're not going to play. Mm-hmm. Play other games. In terms of Dungeon Keeper, yeah, it sucks. That was a great IP, but there are some cool Dungeon Keeper like games we, that are going to be coming out. Are so. we allowed to get upset of the misuse of an IP on a mobile platform at this point? Because I'm kind of over it. Like. I, it's happening. Like, like we've got to. There's so many it's games happening. out there. there pe- they, people are going to ruin your your favorite franchise. They're going to do it. It <laughs> happens because it gets to a point where that franchise has to be milked. And I think gamers are spending too much of their energy complaining yeah. about games that they liked I mean, 20 then, years uh, ago that may not be relevant now, you know? And so just play other games. There's all kinds of derivatives. Um, you, we're, do yeah, we just got to spend... Too too much energy. On Leave Pac Man alone. <laughs> the dude. <laughs> I was gonna say the dude on uh the like the cover, the kind of iconic devil looking guy for Dungeon yeah. Keeper. And you you mentioned uh, every franchise is going to be milked. I that that would be a rough job. <laughs> He's gonna milk him. <laughs> he could he could easily be milked. Yes. <laughs> Um, my shout out uh goes actually goes to Evolve. I got really wrapped up in that release. Oh. Uh, the release trailer this week mm-hmm. or the uh, announcement trailer I guess and then to my surprise they like everybody was showing like the gameplay videos from the demos they had but Turtle Rock Studios the guys behind uh, Left 4 Dead I believe just Left 4 Dead 1 Valve kind of ran with Left 4 Dead 2 and that team has since left and they're working with 2K now and they're making a 4 on 1 multiplayer game called Evolve that first of all the setup the setup from the trailer makes it look like Predator which is like uh-huh. chain guns yeah. and um, 
the the characters' designs look hilarious to me. I love the stereotypes represented. Uh, I do think, I think you either got to go with giant mustache on Space Cowboy, or you do <laughs> big bearded redneck guy. I don't think you have both, but I, I you know, I'll, I'll come around to it. Um, but anyway, the same same kind of approach in that you're playing as a team of four, but the fifth player controls. Um, oh shit! I believe it's called the Goliath. It's basically this giant alien creature that is out in the map, and he's consuming things to evolve, to like grow stronger, mm-hmm. grow bigger, get powers, uh, while he's being hunted by these four characters. And um, that just sounds like a really, really great multiplayer concept. And if any team can like flesh that out to you know be something uh, even more than it sounds, I, I think it's in the in in the right hands there. And the trailer was awesome, and all the I can't wait to play it. Gave me actually, you mentioned Giant Citizen Kabuto. It kind of gave me flashbacks to that as well, and uh, I think this could be super cool. Well, the best thing I took away from all those previews, everybody wrote that th- this is a studio that is unbelievably confident in their game. The <laughs> amount of time they let people play the game, like everyone was like, it's really well polished. It's considered you know alpha. It looks great. It plays great. It's really exciting. Like they wanted people to play it. You know, we we're kind of in this world where some studios are a little bit dodgy about letting you play games because they don't want you to get the wrong impression. They're like, nah, play it. This is awesome. This game's gonna be awesome. It's got Godzilla. It's got Predator. It's, I mean, oh my god, that game's gonna be so freaking cool. Yeah, I wonder if they'll, I wonder if they'll add other creatures or like, you know, there, there's gonna be there's gonna be more stuff. For, I mean, I know Goliath's there's hunting two down. Play modes. Okay. I was going to say that yeah, Goliath's just, hunting down prey himself to eat and evolve. So I'm sure there's other uh-huh. enemies that are in the way of the, um, but the main guy, I wonder if they'll have multiple ones or, or just the, just the one big one, probably just the one big one. Oh, well, it, well, it sounds to me like there's, there's a, a left for dead, like mode attached to it. Like, you know, the, the undead versus humans. Yeah. I, there's another mode attached where there's, more creatures that you're choosing from and there's other creatures okay and you're going to have all kinds of and also like in terms of the stereotype guys from what i read there's you're going to have your choice of characters within those roles so so you don't have to have like a full bearded team it was just like (laughs) there's little space there's their old gritty space cowboy guy looked great and then they also had like Mm -hmm. giant redneck guy that looked great and i was just like i really only need one or the other um because you know big black cyborg dude was awesome and then the, the flying sniper lady she was cool but let's just like these two were a little bit too close and uh yeah um, but both but i mean but an excellent beard and an excellent mustache and so what what am i really complaining about at that point i was gonna say t- gosh first world problems right there <laughs> I just out, one of the coolest scenes in that trailer was the the characters standing there they look off in the distance and all these birds fly up out of the jungle mm-hmm and they're like, oh shit, something's coming. Yeah, gonna be know, like, I was like, oh, that is so iconic, dude. That is so iconic. So many things. So it's uh, next gen. It's Xbox One, PlayStation Four, PC, and then um, it's uh, shit. What was I going with that? I mean, the graphics looked looked great, but there's gonna be all these kinds of ways where you you can try to track where the creature is. So it doesn't sound like the mm-hmm. map's gonna be huge, where you even as the creature you can hide for too long. But it's gonna be an interesting game of cat and mouse be- before you know that mouse turns into a badass and. Um, you need to call in some, you know, call in a Titan to take him down or something. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> my call out is to a Tiny Death Star and to these little free to play games with endless updates. Because I don't know when I'm supposed to be done with you. I was, I was, <laughs> okay, I was done with Tiny Death Star. Um, and by done, I mean I play it every couple days, but only like just to refresh things, not like, not my intense tiny Death Star sessions that I had those first few weeks. Then they went and added this whole new section to, um, so like you've got all these, all the shops and all the floors that you're taking care of, but then you have these Imperial levels where you're, you're doing research and you're supposed to just level up these items and it gives you money. But now, Instead of just having one item per level, you've got multiple items per, per level and different assignments coming in from Darth Vader. Anyway, those levels just got like triply complex and you have to watch them every half hour now. And oh no, it just added a lot of work work to me enjoying this game and I am not strong enough to stop. And anyway, <clears throat> my point was, if you're going to have updates like this, like I... Tiny Death Star has been so weird. It took a while for it to come out. I don't know when and if this game's going to be done. 
and it's fine if it's not, but like I really appreciate like when the bigger games like uh, Plant Side Two, for instance, they they lay out like basically a roadmap for the year of the features they're adding. I, w- I want to know what are you actually working on with Tiny Death Star because I feel like I was investing in the wrong thing, and now you made me take a right hand turn. And there are other games that have done this that have turned me away, and I don't want to quit Tiny Death Star, but it's really frustrating, and I'm still addicted, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> I won't stop, but I want to stop, and so can they stop? I haven't touched Tiny Death Star in a long time. I knew nothing about anything you've just said, and now I kind of hate that you said it, because it <laughs> means I'm going to have to launch it and see this stuff for myself, and then I'm back in it. This is more I'm back in the shit. Do. Defoe! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Defoe! Defoe! All right. Don't Aaron, let this happen. Take us home with your shout-outs and call-outs. My shout-out goes to... Let's just keep the mobile train going. <laughs> My shout-out goes to a game called Threes. I picked it up after reading a little review of it last week. It's by the same, I think, people involved in making a game called Puzzle Juice, which was another mobile game. (laughs) Uh, I don't want to get into describing that one. But Threes, uh, in particular, apparently took a year to make, and the story about that is kind of, was interesting to me in that the only reason it took a year is because they had a premise for it, like a basic premise, which is the game they released last week, but they've tried to build upon it and make it more interesting and add other layers to it. And every time they showed it off to people, they were like, oh, this is a little complex. I liked it more when it was just this. And it was kind of like it took them so long because they built a game, built upon it, and then deconstructed it back to its simplest form and then put it out there. And now people are on Twitter you know, tweeting out their uh, high scores. And there's like five-digit scores, uh, I think um, – I believe Chris Plant from Polygon tweeted out 8,000. Yeah, he must have cheated his ass went up to like 20,000 points high score. And my best score has been 4,000 so far. Willem Willem Dafoe Dafoe needs seven digits. You know, he needs to weed out all these cheaters so that my (laughs) score can be higher on the leaderboard. But it's just a really fun game of just matching. You have to match a two and a one to get three. And from there, you have to match three and three to get six, six and six to get to make 12. Right. And it's a four by four uh, grid. So once you like run out of moves, to get all, it's get over. Get out my multiplication tables to play this game. All, no, all you need to know is that two numbers look alike, they can go together, unless oh. it's two or one. <laughs> No, I read so, your I read your radio waves kind of hype in this game and downloaded it. I haven't played yeah. it yet, but then heard a bunch of other people talking about it. And then uh, I think Giant Bomb's actually going to do a stream with uh, one of the developers of the game playing it because apparently oh, nice. his high scores are just unattainable and uh, just he's playing he's playing stop. it on a different level. So, which seems to be really exciting to people to enjoy that game. So. I want to watch that. I feel like it will be like when we were all playing Spelunky and I was doing super good and people quit. That never happened. <laughs> That never happened. That never happens. No, we all Spelunky got updated. It. Did you know that? Like Spelunky has like they a pro. Added, uh, they added a pro like a... HUD for <laughs> live streamers. That cracks me up. And I, I thought that I, was amazing. Awesome. That is just embracing your audience because <laughs> I mean, how many how many daily challenge live streams are still out there? There's still. I mean, I, a game will not die, and that's awesome. Yeah. And I kind of want to keep Spelunky playing. Start will playing live it again. forever. I kind of want to get back into it. Uh, my call out, however, is to the infamous Flappy Bird. And just all the shit around that game, the fact that it became popular in the first place, it apparently came out sometime last year, became popular in the last couple did of it? weeks. Who made it? Who uh, made this happen? His name was... No, I no, no. I mean, like, who, oh, who, who, did like it? Oh. who found the game believe, and caused the explosion? I want to put the was blame it? on a YouTuber named, like, Pewdie... Uh, is Pewdie it Pie? PewDiePie or PewDiePie? PewdiePie. Pewdiepie. Hey, whatever his name. Yeah, Pewdiepie. I believe, <laughs> I believe the... he's the one. Oh man. Okay, that explains I, explains the buzz around it before. Yeah, before I figured out, I was like, why are why is this a topic of it, conversation? Yeah. <laughs> like it made no sense. Like my my, I think I saw something about it in a side about Flappy Bird. I'm like, what the hell is Flappy Bird? So I ignored it, and I woke up early one morning, checked my phone, still half asleep. Just happened to jump on Twitter to see what was going on, and people were like, Flappy Bird, Flappy Bird, sharing pictures of Flappy Bird, and I'm like, what the hell? So I downloaded it, played it twice, and went back to sleep, and I was like, this was, yeah. why are we talking about this? And it's just crazy, like, IGN has a review of the game, they gave it like a five point something, I'm like, why? Is this a joke? Wow. There's the deconstructions of like, the industry There's something seriously wrong occurring. if somebody is assigned to review that game. 
Uh, the, there oh. is something wrong. Flappy Bird is like you a dog do taking a shit game. on a sidewalk. <laughs> Who the fuck reviews that yeah, game? They reviewed it. I it blew my mind. What a but Flappy out Bird to is, a five. <laughs> yeah, just a five. It's it's clearly <laughs> it deserves on better on a scale orders. of eighteen. But it's it's really it's a literal turd of a game that it's people hard, have placed on display at the museum, and they're having deep introspection about this turd. I, yeah. Some people are upset that it's, it looks and sounds like Mario. Some people are upset that it's too hard and unfair. Some people I mean, are upset that we're being upset about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the story is is the developer and everything kind of around him. And uh, you guys were... Uh, Ethan, you were kind of talking about... I didn't know his actual story. Why Why? Why is this guy getting rich a problem? Um, well, he is from Vietnam, and he, you know, the rumor is that he's making like fifty thousand dollars a day. That's not confirmed, um, mm-hmm. but he's made a lot of money. And you know, the living wage in Vietnam is dramatically, dramatically lower than uh, what we would be used to in the Western world. So, uh, the concern for him is that you know, there's 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 some corruption, uh, some criminal elements that would see someone who just went from you know, making a normal wage to be a millionaire without the proper uh, structure in place to keep him protected. I mean, uh, this is something that kind of classically happens with uh, lottery winners here in the States, though, you know, hmm. we, we have a more, uh, I guess, maybe reliable police force. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this guy is not, he's not prepared for having this amount of money, um, and he didn't like the fact that it was addicting. Uh, he was getting Twitter messages from people that were, crazy like you like this guy's people are kind of giving him shit because they're like oh you're making so much money the dude kind of has some ethics and he's kind of falling back on him uh he had no plan of this game being super popular though he does have at least three more top 10 games um that are you know simple and whatnot on the app store but um the fact of the matter is is it got too big and there's more to this story and i think that people need to uh my biggest problem with it is people need to respect this dude's request to end Flappy Bird. He wants it to end. Someone's going to redo Flappy Bird. It's not tough. Everyone's already reprogrammed it a million yeah. times. Uh, the guy wants out of the spotlight. He, he didn't intend for this to happen. Let's let him get out of the spotlight. Let's let's forget about this. I know it's a big story because it's slow news, but uh, it, it could be unsafe for this guy. It really could. And that's not to say anything about Vietnam. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to knock that as a con- whole country, but that is one of the concerns that he <laughs> himself had. So... Until the dude has, you know, enough protection to prevent him from being taken advantage of, I think that, you know, everyone needs to back off, you know. I don't, yeah. I still That's what I say about that. still don't understand people latching onto it. It was, I think it's, it should have been just completely forgettable and harmless. And um, It really should have but, been. But at this point, it was a really fascinating week and fascinating story. So uh, I get that, but what a weird, and what a weird ending. So Flappy Bird, to, we barely knew you. Let's ye. get the foe over there. Come the on, folk and, uh, bodyguard him. Yeah, bodyguard him. Yeah. No, he wouldn't. He'd give him like, yeah, he'd give him a like dumb to, book. He's I like, saw a dog. Yeah, give these to the, you know, these these will get the guys to stop. Oh my gosh! Hold on, guys. Hold on. Yeah, your dog is here. I saw. Hey. Uh oh. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> I got him, puppy. So, did you learn how to open doors? Yeah, what just happened? Phone. You've already eaten one of those. You've already eaten one of those. Hi, pup. Say hi, everybody. Aww. All what right. do you think about Flappy Bird, pup? Tell us about Flappy Bird. <laughs> oh, do you want down or something? All right. He doesn't want. He hates Flappy Bird. It's too hard. <laughs> it was terrible. He put me on live television. <laughs> <laughs> It's unsafe for him now. <laughs> no. Gotta get him out of the spotlight. Oh man, he's he chewed through about two hundred fifty dollars of audio equipment last week, so um, he's not allowed in here. <laughs> he owes you money. <laughs> but I tease him by bringing him in here and putting him on the show. So I think that's a good spot to end. Uh, thanks everybody for uh, we tried out a new format. Let us know what you thought. Thought uh, we we're gonna do this show every Tuesday on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. You can subscribe on iTunes, give us a review if you liked it, leave some comments, let us know. Um, we'll see how 2014 goes. Got some other podcasts planned for y'all. Ethan, Aaron, thanks for hanging out. And yeah. we'll catch you Keep all next time.